All right. So worst contracts draft. Here's the deal. We're going to go in order. We go in snake fashion. So if you get the first pick, you don't go again until six. Get the third pick, you get three and four. And the middle pick just keeps sandwiching around. We're going to try to each build the worst possible team of <laughs> contracts. I have all the numbers. I have everything written down. We're going to pour one out for the Westbrook wall contracts. Those are really yeah. the standards. You had to yep. take multiple first round picks just to get the con get rid of the contract. They couldn't <laughs> yeah. trade them all summer. Houston had to buy out John Wall's contract. They couldn't even like trade it. And then Westbrook, the Lakers finally unloaded, got some players. They had to attach a pick to it. Um, there's really no pick like our contract like that, except for one that I think is going to be the first pick in this draft. So House, how do we decide who drafts first? Uh, I can't remember how we did it last year, but I don't want to go first because I feel <laughs> like I know who's going to go first and I've already done my bit on this guy ad nauseum. Everybody knows how I feel about this particular player. All right. So we'll give Waz hmm. first pick. House, That's you go second. I'll go, th I'll go third unless you want the sandwich picks house. No, no, we, we can you, keep it. You know, you do I, like I, sandwiches. I do like, sa if you could give me a sandwich, I'll take it. But otherwise it's fine how we roll. All right, Waz, you're on the clock. First pick in the 2023 worst contracts draft. Who is it? Yeah, for me, this this player deserves the worst contract because he has two years left on it at around $80 million, which would mean that he's he's making $40 million annually after this year and is not an NBA player. Like, of all the people I have on my list, there's guys that I'm just like, you know what, reasonably I could say, this guy deserves to be in an NBA rotation um, and can play NBA basketball. They might be significantly overpaid, but they can all play NBA basketball except for this one guy, and that's Ben Simmons, who to me is the worst contract in the NBA right now. Because one, he can't play when, it, uh, when his back is bothering him or he's suffering from some kind of mental health issue, or he's just straight up doesn't like the team that he's on, whatever. And even when he does, he's still picking the splinters out of his ass um, from the benching that Jacques Vaughn has, and Steve Nash, to, um, to be honest, have given him all season. So to me, ben, ben Simmons is the worst deal in professional basketball to the point where, again, most of these guys, with some exceptions, um, I feel like in two, if their deals were up in two years, they would still get deals. Is Ben Simmons even a minimum player in two years? He's the worst deal in the NBA, in my opinion. He's my number one pick. My only quibble with that was, which is a, a beautiful diatribe. The contract's <laughs> actually worse than you gave it credit for. It's three <laughs> years, not two. Oh, it's, excuse me, three years. Yeah, it's 35.448 million this year, 37.89 next year. And then in 2024-25, guaranteed 40.338. The total package is over 113 million house for three years. But this is a guy once upon a time we defended, we liked, we thought he was a top 15 basketball player. And the Nets bought a lemon. And I, I got to be honest, I don't understand how the Nets front office survived this one. They rallied a little bit with the KD trade, which I think they maximized what they could have gotten out of KD. And even the Kyrie trade looks pretty good. The Dallas might not even make the playoffs, so it's not like they lost any skin on that one. But but panic trading Harden and just basically getting Seth Curry, who they're not even really playing, and then these two first that don't really matter, and then Simmons as the linchpin without doing any real research into what was going on with him. I mean, they trade him. He's, he's hurt right away. I thought it was indefensible. Where do you stand, House? So you you just said two things that I'm not sure are are a matter of public record and you know widely held held views. In the first place, I don't feel like the James Harden trade was a panic trade. Mm. I feel like Kyrie Irving drove James Harden away from a team that James Harden was willing to make a commitment to, did make a commitment to, and and enjoyed playing for uh, and with. It, but he was still on the team. They were still paying him. Yeah, he was an employee Ky of the Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kyrie took a knife and knifed him in the back. He, he tried. James Harden, you know, at least showed up in the playoffs and tried to drag that team when Kyrie, you know, had had his, uh, you know, whatever big toe injury and then, you know, whatever uh, provocative stance he had to take on public health and other kinds of 
shenanigans and distractions. I didn't feel like it was a panic trade from, from Brooklyn's perspective. And I also thought that it was a reasonable gamble. I, I'm not so sure that they didn't do their diligence. I think that they did do some, some diligence. It's just you, you, you don't know until you know. And I, 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 think, I think he got hurt worse after the trade. And that's what set us on this trajectory to where we are right here at this moment. And p- part of the thing, the reason why I didn't um, anticipate Simmons being the number one pick in this draft is because at the time that contract was given him, he had, he had earned it. I mean, he, he, he the, 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 the forecast for him, well, I, I, yeah. we can quibble, but yeah. right, yeah. He, he had accomplished some stuff. He had accomplished sure. some stuff. The Bradley Beal thing is entirely Wait, different. House, hold and, on. And I'm not going hold into on. I'm there. Not letting, I'm not going house, into there. I can't let you off the hook. Go ahead. Didn't have to trade James Harden. Oh, because Kyrie didn't want to play home games because of the vaccine. So now James Harden's like, well, I don't want to play basketball either. Yeah. I know it was a dysfunctional situation, but he was still an asset. You know, when you look at at the prices of some of these stars that are yeah. being thrown around now, like, I don't know if you're Philly, you're doing that trade pretty much every time they're holding I'm- out. With Simmons for something, you agree with that was I? I just don't I, know why they had to do it if if they I, didn't know that Simmons was healthy. I agree with you um, in the sense that I felt coming into the season that the Sixers had no leverage in the sense that one, the guy couldn't come back and play for the Sixers. There just there was just no. It became so toxic with Doc, with Joel, with all with the fans. He can't play for your team again. That's a one. And then the two, the last time we watched him play was against the Hawks in the playoffs in which he was a pumpkin. So he's a bad player who can't come back to your team, which is why I kind of agree agree with Bill. And at the time of the trade, I was like, yo, everybody's hubris has kind of been rewarded here. Uh, Ben Simmons is nonsense. He gets to go to the team that he wanted to go to. Uh, the the stubbornness that Daryl Morey showed in just holding the guy and being like somebody's gonna bite, and then James Harden ultimately he was right. throwing he was another right. temper tant- tantrum and getting his way. Ultimately, everybody's ridiculousness got rewarded in that trade. But again, I I thought Ben Simmons was a toxic asset immediately after that Hawk series. They somehow got a freaking all star for him, and now well, like. Like, look at this. He can't play. He doesn't play. He's like the 13th man. Well, they, I mean, there were some red flags with the fact that he seemed very comfortable just not playing for reasons that seemed pretty unclear to everybody. Like his yeah, feelings but, were hurt. He just felt like it had run its course. By the way, he, and this is this is not talking out of school, Bill. Like, like we know what he was doing. I have this on good authority. He's in the Hollywood Hills throwing parties and hanging out. That's what he was doing. Yeah. When he wasn't playing. Well, he no, wasn't hard at work at his game. <laughs> that's the thing. And we know that from a basketball work ethic standpoint, there were things Come that on. just didn't seem to be getting better in any way, shape, or form. I, when the trade happened, Harden just seemed like a damaged asset because he had quit on two teams in 10 months. And Simmons seems like a, like a damaged asset to me. Um, and I didn't know who was going to win the trade. And, and there was a real possibility both teams were going to lose the trade. You look at how Harden's playing this year. I have Harden, like he's definitely going to be on one of my three all NBA teams. I'm just telling you, he'll, be, he'll either be second team or third team, but he's going to be all NBA for me um, unless he just tails off the last 10 games. It's turned out way better for Philly than I ever imagined. And honestly, way worse for the Nets than I ever imagined. The fact that he's unplayable seemed inconceivable to me. You could have told me he at least could have been like, rebounds and defense and just refuse to shoot the ball anymore. Seemed like a worst case scenario. This is a way worse case scenario. This is a guy who might be out of the league or getting bought out. Anyway, all right, enough on Ben Simmons. Who do you have for the number two pick house? Well, before before we move on, I have a question for you. So you yeah. sent uh, me a was a list. Was it your goal and intention that we use this list exclusively or are we allowed no. to bring some? Okay, all right. No. So he just showed us his work. He basically was, leaked his big board. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I gave you a little, I sent you maybe, I don't know, 50 contracts. But last year, if you remember, famously, Waz went off the board with a Clay Thompson pick that singed my eyebrows off. <laughs> and it took me six months to regrow my eyebrows after that. Well, and, and, and lo, lo and behold, the list you sent us has, has Clay Thompson on it. The reason I asked that question, Bill Simmons from Boston, is because 
I didn't see one single Charmin Celtic on, on this list. Well, this, I sent it a month ago. I sent it to no, you guys no, literally like five ago. weeks ago. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> in, in, in any event, I'm not going to select any of the Charmin Celtics with the second overall pick because it's not time yet. But there's going to be some Charmin Celtics that, that catch I, some some fire. I'll tell uh, you on this. this podcast today. I was updating the final list off that of that page that I sent you. Yes. I did add a Celtic. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't, come don't up spoil with two. it. No spoiler not, alerts. I've, I've got two potential ones, but All right. I, I, I am now in this position where I, I must do the thing that I said I wasn't going to do, which is take Bradley Beal. Mm. I'll, I'll keep it sw- short and sweet. And then you guys, you know, it'll be easy. The one thing you cannot do in professional sports is pay a non superstar like a goddamn superstar. <laughs> and. It is something that you cannot recover from. It will take the entirety of this contract, the full duration of the five years that he got to 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 make one step forward in, t- in terms of a recovery. The team has locked in a 36 to 40 win ceiling, and that's assuming that they keep Porzingis and, and Kuzma. I, I, I have serious doubts about Kuz sticking around. For what purpose? Now, I will say this. I like going to the games. It's fun to go down there, <laughs> check them out. I'm getting some, some get really good seats and and see the other teams come through. It's a very re- like relaxed uh, in, environment, but there isn't any like serious basketball being played. And this is what they chose. And I I'm not even talking about all the bells and whistles, the no trade clause, and all the other nonsense kicker that yeah. are attrib- right exactly. Well, why don't you tell thing. the audience how much the contract is for? Or do you want it, me it, to? Are you wait, unable wait, to speak the words? The, the Podfather, the Podfather. You you have you run the numbers, brother. Well, it's year one of a five year deal was for Jeez. a cool and crisp two hundred and fifty one million. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's the contract. I watched a game last week where it, it was a totally winnable game, and he did a couple of Bradley Beal things, and they lost. He is. It was against the Hawks. I know. Yeah, he is for a for, as a last minute guy. He is not in my top half of guys I want with the ball doing stuff in the last minute. But that's the thing about this Wizards season. It's been a fun season. They're always in these close games, and more often than not, they blow them. I agree with House. I, I the contract is crazy. I would be really curious to see if if they try to trade it this summer. What kind of offers they'd be getting back? Because you'd have to have the money that matched it combined with picks and stuff like that. I. Waz is just making kind of a sad, grim face right now. What do you think, Waz? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Um, he's clearly not worth the deal in the sense that he he's just not a superstar. He's He doesn't by himself elevate an offense to competence in and of himself. Like Bradley Bill is not an offense um, unto himself. He's a good offensive player, high volume. The shooting has gotten better. Like people have – he's always had this reputation as a shooter – but has never had the shooting <laughs> to, yeah. to, to to match it up. He's never been some anybody's idea of a playmaker. Uh, he's kind of just been like, look, he can do a reasonable job at at elevated volumes um, and you know usage percentage. But his defense has always been a little bit overrated. And yeah, the idea that you would pay this guy like he is the leader of a franchise sort of North Star of, you know, competence. It's just not the case. And there's been times where Kyle Kuzma, who gets paid about a fourth of his salary, has just been better than the guy, which is just insane <laughs> to, well, to consider. And so the people listening, we're just talking about everybody that we're about to draft just as the asset, production, quality versus mm-hmm. the money figure. And in this case, like Bill's having a solid year statistically, right? He's 20... 23.4 points a game, four assists, five and a, or five and a half assists, four rebounds, 51, 37, 85 percentage splits. It's solid. Yeah. If he was your third guy, you'd be pumped. If he was your second guy, you could talk yourself into it as long as you had an awesome first guy. It's what House laid out. When this is your signature guy, your number one dude, where are you going? And the answer is what we watch with the Wizards. You're 39 and 43, 40 and 42, 42 and 40. You're going to be in that range. Porzingis is 22 and nine this year. I mean, he's been a, a really high level, above average offensive center. And Kuzma is a good player. 
Um, that's not ever going to be enough. And then you have the, the other thing is you have no chance to improve from this basis point. What do you do? How do you add people? You really can't. So to me, the problem with, with Bradley Beal is like he's getting paid as if the difference between him and Jordan Poole, say, is the difference between Jordan Poole and Devin Booker or even Donovan Mitchell. And that's just not the case. Yeah, He's not as good as those, those two people who play his position and he's paid like he is. And that's just... It's just not true. He's he's more in line with a Jordan Poole, in my opinion, than he right, is like those a more top level. Jordan Poole. Yeah, those top level NBA All Star type of guys, All NBA kind of guys. All right, I'm on the clock with the third pick. Can't believe this guy's still on the board. Seems like a nice guy by all accounts. Duncan Robinson, <laughs> he's, who signed a, he was, a five for was, ninety last year, uh, <laughs> still has the four for seventy four point three left. <laughs> It's like a like a Bertans 2.0 kind of contract. Yes, it's it's it kind is. of staggering. Yeah. Um, there's always different reasons why he's not playing or why he hasn't been successful, but he has not been successful really since he signed the contract. Again, yeah. seems like a cool guy. I root for him. Um, Self-made man, worked his way up, mm -hmm. turned himself into a really cool story, got the bag, and has not <laughs> been really heard from since. And you know, to, speaks to a bigger issue of these Miami moves the last couple of years where after the really smart Jimmy Butler move and the hero draft pick the last couple of years, like every swing, he culture, Pat Riley, every swing they've taken has either not worked or really failed. Um, and yet I'm still terrified in the playoffs and they're probably going to beat the Celtics in a 2-7 or 3-6. I'm just already resigned to it. Uh, but anyway, I have him as the third pick. Yeah, I, I, I like the pick, um, especially I, I believe the last year of his deal is a player option. Spoiler alert, he will be picking up that player option. Well, that's the thing. I just factored that in. It's 17 million a year. <laughs> but, like, and, and again, uh, similar to Ben Simmons, but I think the difference between Duncan Robinson and Ben Simmons is like he has an identifiable NBA talent which is his yeah. shooting, even if for whatever reason it's sort well, of tapered off. can't shoot anymore. I, I don't know. I, is it still a talent? I, I I have to believe that. He was so incredible at it when he sort of burst onto the scene three years ago. And I have to believe that he could find minutes on another team that was in Miami. But yeah, I, I like I like this deal. Um, it was very, very high up on my board. So salute to you. You for, like this deal. For, I like how bad this deal is. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it is funny. It's a throwback deal. It, it reminds mm -hmm. me of the era when guys like uh, Isaiah Thomas were, were, you know, was a GM and the, or, or a coach. And, and Doc is, is also guilty of this. They go up against somebody that, that is hot, that, that, that torches their team. And then they hand out a, a giant contract that we, I mean, you, you, can, you can do your Jerome James, you can do way yeah. back when, you know, uh, uh, Seattle overpaying for Jim McElvain because he had a decent uh, uh, year for the, for the bullets uh, and, and didn't pay Sean Kemp, but teams, you know, uh, see, see something jump in gross overpay and, and you're stuck with it. it. It's shout out. I mean, I guess in a way, it shouldn't surprise me that it was Riles because it's an old school kind of contract. Well, well I'll say this about what he did too is that Miami's offense became so hard to guard around people being completely terrified of what he was doing off the ball, right? Like his yeah. movement and how he was catching and shooting on the run, like that completely opened up their offense. And they went to the finals behind that. Right. Well, so listen, I understand wanting to reward it something that was central to your finals run. Well, the I 2020, he was 45% from three, eight point three is a game in the regular <laughs> season. In the playoffs, he played 21 games for them. He was 28.6 minutes a game. They made the finals. He's 40% from three that year. So <laughs> last year, um last year or the 2021 year, he was a little banged up, wasn't the same. And then they said, well, screw it. Let's pay him off the 2020 year. And it didn't work. There was a baseball player the Red Sox had named Dave Stapleton. Every year for the first eight years of his career, his batting average went down. <laughs> and it was, it's like a, the most fascinating baseball reference page to look at. He starts out at like 321 and each year it goes down. Robinson's kind of working on that in basketball <laughs> reference. 20 is 13.5. 
13.1 a year after, 10.9 last year, 6.7 this year, um, <laughs> playing 17 minutes a game. And the the funny or not so funny thing is they kind of need him. Like they need one more shooter. Struess has been playing more for them, but but he can't um, stop a nosebleed, Bill. And, and yeah. that's just not going to cut it in my and, he, and he just shooting. It's funny. It's it's almost like when you have that reliever in baseball who's lights out for a year, and then the next year they can't find the strike zone. And you're thinking, what happened? You've thrown 99 over the middle last year. Now now you can't. You're hitting guys. All right. So the draft board has dropped a little bit. Um, that was really the big three. There's mm -hmm. multiple guys here who could go with the number four pick. I'm going to go with an old standby. Just, just he's an OG. Maybe it's a little high. It's like when you're in a fantasy draft and you, you those years where you'd see Tom Brady and you'd be like, wow, Tom Brady's going for eight bucks. I got to get him. <laughs> I just feel like getting this guy with the fourth pick is such great value. Davis Bertans again, <laughs> three, three for 49. He's, he's got two years left after this one. He's almost, almost at 50 million bucks left on his deal. And, uh, and Dude. it just delights me to no end. It's, it's house's team was responsible for the contract house defended it at the time. No, no, he's been great. I like it. It's just like the wizard's DNA just infected your body. Anyway, Davis, you're the fourth pick. What do you got? House? I I have no argument with it. I mean, you know, he he belongs in China, uh, <laughs> and and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some some buyout activity as as we come up uh, to the next season because Dallas has to go through some wholesale looking in the mirror here. Coming, come up. on now, we we're not gonna send him to China. We are gonna send him back to Europe, Eurobasket. <laughs> I'm sure he could find a team in Italy or or uh, Israel, somebody picked that guy up. But yeah, I had, I, I laughed by the time I got to his deal. I was like, wow, this is still a horrible deal. It's just, even it's though, just going forever. <laughs> even though he's gotten some tick in Dallas and, you know, he's been useful at, at moments for them this year. But if you watch Dallas at all, you realize that they are one of the worst defenses in the league this year, easily. And, um, Davis Bertans does not aid in that mission. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> that's a great, that's a great. You know what's thing. funny that I've changed my mind on that Porzingis trade a hundred times, right? Because Dallas did make the Western Finals last year. Dinwiddie was a sure. piece of it, but now you look at it, Dallas doesn't. They can't find a center. They had to roll the dice with Christian Wood, who's that's been super unhappy. Oh, who could have figured? Um, and. Porzingis is playing really well for the Wizards and Dinwiddie just gets kind of passed around the league. But uh, that seemed yeah, like you a, hear actually that a pretty good trade for the Wizards. relationship had kind of broken down, right? Like they, they they kind of just didn't like each other or didn't like playing with each other at least. I don't know yeah, bad if fit. it was personal, but like it, it became toxic between those two and these teams, Bill. Like you know what the, how they are. They're, they're so desperate to keep the young superstar happy that they'll do damn near anything. And, you know, the poor Zingas deal seemed like a no-brainer for them where they just dumped the guy's deal. Um, and it was like, look, he's not getting along with Luca. We got to get him out of here. I think they might have won the trade. The might have been one of Tommy Shepard's <laughs> only good <laughs> moves we could really point to. All right, House, you're on the clock. Fifth pick. This to me was not very challenging and and I want to give kudos I want everybody to make sure you listen to this week's uh podcast with Bill Simmons featuring Kevin O'Connor cuz there is a, a very interesting conversation about the return and resurgence of the big man yeah. to NBA <laughs> basketball and and it's a curious moment and it's a very thoughtful conversation I enjoyed it very much it made me feel very very confident with this next next pick and that is Rudy Gobert Mm. <laughs> of the Minnesota Timberwolves now, a contract with four years and $170 million left on it. And I will tell you this, Bill Simmons, while I listened to you and KOC run through 10 or 12 or 15 different centers and the attributes that the modern center uh, offers <laughs> and that the most successful modern centers, Rudy Gobert is a specialist and not a very good one. It is mm. as though... In, in the NFL, using a, a first-round pick or a second-round pick or a third-round pick on a punter or a kicker. He has one specific skill that, that's only translatable and, and, and worthwhile from a competitive standpoint in a single context, which is 
regular season around the hoop defense. And we have seen from the early indications of the relationship between he and Carl Anthony Towns in Minnesota, an inability from this guy to get along from a playing standpoint. Now, I don't know whether or not, you know, personally what, what, what the story is. Cause he's a, he was just, a, he arrived and then KAT got hurt uh, in, in fairly short order, but Minnesota is right on the, 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 the cut line here uh, of, of missing out on, on the playoffs. It's in, and the best they can hope for is making the play in. And I don't have them making the playoffs if in there, even in the, in the play in uh, situation. You know what's crazy about Gobert? The the advanced metrics still don't mind him. Yeah. Like there's <clears> like <throat> the offense, defense ratings, all that stuff. Like they're they basically like him more than the eye test does. I agree with House. I had Gobert in the top five or six was because not only is it a bad contract, not only is it a constant reminder that you gave up all this stuff for this guy who might not even make you a first round playoff team. But he's 30, and I don't see his game aging well, which was the other issue with the trade. What's he going to look like when he's 33? So he's going to be like, if he gets a tad slower and a, a tad more mummy-ish every year, which is what we've seen over and over again with bigger centers, what is that going to look like in two years? Then they'll have two years left on the deal. So a couple of things on Rudy. I think he's being paid as if, you know, the thing that he was very special at, um, he's still special at, right? Which is defense, defensive player of the year level production. I don't think he's no longer, he's no longer special. He's still very good defensive player, defensive big, but he's no longer special. And so to be paid the way that he is to be a one dimensional guy and not be outstanding at that dimension is tough. Um, and two, and, you know, he makes me think of another play. He makes me think of Brooke Lopez because Brooke Lopez, I don't think, has any better foot speed or even defensive instincts as Rudy. And he's been that plotting drop defender sort of big man. But he's changed over the past couple of years. He's been willing to come up to the level more, even do a little bit of switching out more. He's just gotten better at what the modern demands are. I don't see why Rudy couldn't do that. But... Brooke on the other end is providing you with all this spacing while punishing switches. It's right. just it's just tough. I don't know how Rudy sort of um, regains his value, even if he starts to adjust, you know, his game going forward. Yeah, I think we would all like his contract if it was four for 60. But <laughs> sure. when you throw in the extra 110 million, that's when I, I, <laughs> I take pause. You gotta draw the line. Uh, I like that pick, House. All right, Waz, last pick of the second round. Who do you got? See, this is this is easy for me, and it's related to Rudy Gobert. It's the guy who they traded for Rudy Gobert to play his position, who has five years after this year at $260 million. They traded four first-round picks, the rights to their damn draft, all of this stuff for a dude that's already making $45 million to play your spot. And you still get paid a max contract? Call Anthony Towns. It's just a horrible deal. Um, and and the, the, the reason why I know it's a horrible deal, Bill, this guy is their max contract player. He hasn't played since essentially December. We don't know what his timeline to return is. Nobody's talk, nobody even talks about it. It's not even spoken of. People have just moved on. Carl Towns is gone. Who cares? This dude has $260 million left on his deal, right? And I and again, I think, you know, some people would say his contract isn't um all that unvaluable because there might be somebody dumb enough willing to actually give Minnesota stuff for him in a potential trade. Cause I think obviously he's the next domino to move. It's just they have no other choices. But I doubt that. I have a Towns update, that. Was It's 3.34 Pacific time on a Wednesday. Um, he's expected to return in the coming weeks, quote, according to the Timberwolves. <laughs> wow. He's continuing to progress <laughs> in his rehabilitation program. Guys. <laughs> he scrimmaged <laughs> with reserve players and coaches this week. <laughs> this is crazy. What the? What, what did he get? It, like his calf cut off his body? Like, How is his yeah. calf injury this long? I'm I, with I, you, I, I Waz. I agree more. It's, that is a really 
really, really, really tough contract to digest next to the Gobert contract because I think they could trade Towns and I actually think there'll be a market for him because if you look at, you know, his offensive production, oh, the house is raised to say it. And the hoops IQ stuff that we saw from him in the playoffs last year, which was appalling and reprehensible. <laughs> it was pretty As the crazy. months passed, people forget. Like with anything <laughs> else. It's like, oh yeah, they lost in the playoffs. They don't remember some of the shit that actually happened in that series. I think he's I think he's the number one draft pick to get traded this summer of all the stars. I, How's you want I, him? I, I would trade Bradley Beal for Carl Anthony Towns. As, as fast as you put a, a giant plate of fried chicken from Popeye's in front of me and I take that sucker down. Like, the, I can't tell you how fast I would make that trade. The, the money is, is nearly equivalent. Uh, the one aspect of the Bradley Beal thing that I, that I forgot to mention, uh, he's 29 years old turning 30 th this year in, in the first mm. year. We're going to have the first year of this the contract done. Another four years. Great track record for actually, I don't want, I shouldn't say it, share any of this because I want him traded. Uh, he's great. He's a great uh, team player, second <laughs> banana, third banana. Minnesota, you can work Beal in. Let him be a catch and shoot out on the perimeter. Let Anthony Edwards, you know, drive and kick, and Gobert can stand in the middle and mobile. That's a so let him compliment. be a shorter Carl Towns. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> I wonder. You know, he's a Kentucky guy. I wonder if the Knicks have him on their radar. Hmm. Um, wow. There's always the Phoenix. Could you put him with Durant, DeAndre, and like that kind no. of thing? I, I think there's, I think could see the Warriors talking themselves into him. I think there's a lot of teams that would kick the tires on that because his production, <sighs> he's he was putting up 25 and 10 or 25 and 11, whatever, 40% three point shooting. Like you just, you look at the basketball reference page for two minutes and you forget all the other stuff. You're like, whoa, look at those stats. Wow. And that's it. Is that's it, where is, House is. Is. Is, he, is he twice the salary worth of Julius Randle? I just I find that hard to believe because he's going to have to play power forward, right? He he'll, he'll play Julius Randle's position, and obviously he is on another stratosphere of offensive player. But he's way worse at defense. Um, as well, crazy as that is to say about Julius Randle, who used to suck. Um, he's just way worse at defense. Like the few minutes that he did play with Gobert, it was. It was a joke that anybody could think this guy could play defensive minutes at power forward. It's, I don't know. I think Carl Towns, man, I just think he's a losing player. I, I really do. I don't know how, if he is the focal point of what you do and you commit all of those resources to him, how your team can be very good. Minnesota, they had it ideal for him last year with all of these really wiry, long, athletic guys they played this hyper-aggressive defense that allowed Towns to just be like, you know what? Just be aggressive at the top. Everybody else is going to handle your business behind mm. the play and close to the rim because we're so rangy and athletic and strong and all of that. And in this year, trying to get him to just be a traditional big, it's tough. I'm reasonably sure his extension has not kicked in yet. No, it hasn't. Is, it starts which, next year. Which <laughs> harkens back to one of my favorite NBA moments of all time when Washington gave Andre Blatch an extension and it hadn't kicked in yet. And then it kicked in and they amnestied it. They amnestied it right after it kicked in. It's one of the best. That it, in the annals house, we have to do a top 75 worst Wizards Bullets Moves podcast. That's got to be top 12. The Andre Blatch extension. You'll get at least 10 listeners for that, I'm sure. Oh, wow. You get one more pick. Top of the third round. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. This, this one hurts me because I really like this player. Um, but it's become plainly obvious that he's overpaid and, and it feels like he's unmovable. And that's John Collins. Um, oh. He's got three years, almost 80 million left after this year. And ever since he's ruined his the finger on his shooting hand, he can't shoot anymore. And if John Collins isn't sort of respectable from three, if you look at his three point percentage, just completely plummeted since that injury. He's shooting in the 20s now. Um, he's just not as effective of a player. And he's been on the traded block for two solid years and nobody's bitten. And I like him. I think he's a tough player. He plays with an incredible motor. I, I believe he can give you minutes at the five defensively. He's switchable, vertical spacing with the hops on lobs and all of that. But man, he can't shoot 
worth a damn, and he doesn't do anything else offensively. And so, yeah, the contract is tough right now, and, I, and it hurts me, Bill. And how well, I know you I like love the John Hawks. Collins. I know you like. I know you watch a lot of Hawks in general. The three point shooting went off a cliff this year, twenty five percent. House, I like the the concept of somebody being on the trade block for like more than a year. And it's been a year and a half for him. That's just an incredibly (laughs) long amount of time for somebody to work for an employer where it's been (laughs) patently clear. They're not totally satisfied with the working relationship and maybe want to send you to greener pastures and just can't find the right thing out. The interesting thing with Collins, so Phoenix is going to trade for him, right? It's going to happen. And the day before the trade deadline, that new owner they have, Matt Ishbia, he's like, wait a second. We're, we can't get Durant because you, you don't want to give up Mikael Bridges? And they're like, yeah, yeah, Mikael's off limits. He's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Put the Bridges in the trade. And they throw him in the trade and and so yeah. long John Collins. But I'm with Waz House. I, I'm not sure if you're like the 6'10 forward, you're an okay rebounder, not incredible, but you also can't shoot threes. I don't know how you play in 2023 on like a really good team. I mean, you you have to be like a fourth option, and they're paying him like he's a he's a in between a second and third option. That that's the problem with the with the yeah. He's like discount he's Tobias Harris. Yes, but Tobias oh. Harris at least makes oh. open threes. <laughs> Tobias Harris, interesting name. Mm. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> that's a good name. Mm. Oh, House, you're on the clock. <laughs> oh, Tobias Harris. Wait, no, I'm I'm not going to do it, even though he is grossly overpaid, and I fully expect him off the board within the next two rounds. Um, I hope Waz forgives me. I'm going back to Atlanta. Mm. I, I, I don't see. It's a damned if you do damned if you don't for the Hawks, because you, you, you have a player that is the face of the franchise that oh. gives you oh. a is that moment. Oh well, my God. Who, who else Hold is on. it? I got, I got, who else I need is to, it? like a safety harness. Where are we going? Who, else? <laughs> who else is the, is the face of the Atlanta Hawks franchise. And the, the, the dude is, is a coach killer. Can't get, mm. he, he, he only two to be fair. Cr- only two coaches. <laughs> his, his career was resuscitated and saved by Nate Robinson. And he said, thank you so much, Nate. Uh, Nate. Nate McMillan. Uh, Nate, Nate, Nate Robinson. <laughs> Nate said a couple Nate times. <laughs> and he took a giant knife out this year and stabbed it right <laughs> in, in McMillan's back. And what is your best case scenario with Trey Young? I well, can I can I read you like the contract? You you keep he, leaving, you never you keep forgetting to say the contract. You're the numbers has. guy. Well, here's the contract. Five years, $215 million. Yeah. Yeah. Waz is just nodding sadly. <laughs> Look, I'm going to start I, calling did, him Young Beal. Here's what I'll say about Trey Young. In his career, he's proven that he can be an elite offensive player, right? Like just having him on the floor around base level competence, you will have really good offense. Like, he's proven to be that kind of guy in his career. However, the stuff where it seems like he's impossible to work with and deal with on a professional and human level, that's a problem. You know, to me, that's bigger than, you know, can't guard anybody and all of this kind of stuff. It's like the attitude around the team, um, the way these guys play is just so, like, lifeless and not very, they don't play for each other. This doesn't seem to be a connected group. He's gotten two coaches fired. Nate McMillan to the point where he's like defying people in the press where he's just like, yo, fam, I know I'm going to get fired. I don't care. I'm not taking shit from this kid anymore. Like (laughs) that to me, that's bad. And that's why I'll lend this some credence because of the stuff off the court. I think on the court, he's worth his deal. But off the court stuff, it, it, it has to come into consideration when you consider somebody a quote unquote franchise guy where he's pissing everybody off from John Collins to Nate McMillan to you name it. Well, Murray will be the litmus test for this, right? If Murray doesn't want to stay, then that, I think that's another chip in the, uh oh, what's going on here with Trey Young Arsenal? Hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm on the clock. <sighs> Uh, 
I need a ruling on Lonzo Ball. Oh, man. I'm Ooh. glad you Look, I'm Can glad we have the Lonzo Ball us. conversation? So oh, Lonzo has three for 61.5 yet, but it might be just an injury. You just get to yes. write it off. It might not count against the cap. You might get to replace it. So I don't, I don't know. Is it a bad contract or is it just a sad contract? I, I think I'm it's an, a sad. Me too. A, I'm strongly it's a sad, sad contract. Yes. Because yes. right. th- those, those first leaving few out. months, those first few months with him and Caruso on the Bulls was must see TV what these guys were doing the back courts in the NBA. Just, I'm such a fan of Lonzo's game, and by me all too. accounts, he's a great guy. All right, and we'll leave this, him out for his knee to be so cooked. This tough. That hurt me, Bill. That hurt. Oh, hurt. Well, your guy David Griffin's like, yeah, Chicago, you should take him. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. Now we're gonna let him go. All right. So Lonzo, you, you, you know, wait, hold on, Bill. Speaking like Griff's reputation, I've never seen a roller coaster reputation. <laughs> I know, like Griff's before in my life, where it's like he's a genius for the AD deal. Then it's like he's an idiot for what he's doing with Lonzo. Then it's like, oh my God, look at all the stuff New Orleans has. They' about to be. They might yeah. go to the Western Conference Finals this year. They got all the he's Lakers. A the Lakers are gonna get them when Benyama, blah blah blah. And then now it's back to what the fuck is Griff doing? It's crazy, man. He's he needs like his own crisis firm. <laughs> I am a, I'm going to audible. I'm going to audible in a way that's going to please both of you. Mm. Um, This is the second biggest punch that he's taken this season. The first one came courtesy of Draymond Green. (laughs) The second one is right now because Jordan Peele, you are the ninth pick of this draft. Jordan (laughs) Peele. Get out. It's it's the pool. It's five for 132, but this year is the cheap deal. Next year it kicks in and he's like a 30 plus million dollar player. I've watched, I don't watch every Warriors game. I watch a lot of basketball. I don't watch every Warriors game. I, I watch a few of them though. I've personally witnessed four different times when his teammates have become completely disgusted with him <laughs> during a game on the court. <laughs> um, the stats are way down. I don't, yeah. to me, it's just like, if if you're going to have your heat check, a rational confidence guy, the market for that is 12 to 13 million and it's not 30. And I think, they overreacted to last year and his ability to play on big stages. I just, I really worry about this contract if I'm then. This is too much money for somebody who's a defensive liability, who just seems really heat checky. And, and I, I don't know if there's a next gear. And I like him. I've been a huge defender of him the last couple of years, but I have not liked what I've seen this year, House. You're nodding, sadly. Well, he, he's 23 years old. So if you want to try and come up yep. with a, yep. a, a justification, a rationale for why there's yet time. And, and you know, I really think we're going to look back at that punch as a sliding doors moment for the Warriors franchise. I mean, uh, mm. uh, I, I, I feel like the part of the reason why the Warriors don't win games on the road has to do with an overall cohesion. Because it's deep lack of on the road. Yeah, mm. that's precisely. That's right. They're missing it. And, I, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I've heard a, my, our guy, Eddie Johnson, talked about this on uh, on his show with Termini that I like. But just about something like that, the healing of an incident like that is just way longer than I think the mm. dumbasses like us would think. And, you know, especially when it's it's uh Draymond's the leader of the team and it's just hey, can you lead the same way after that and look it's anecdotal but the 7 for 26 is not anecdotal that's a real number on the road that you know they're playing the clippers tonight it's before we tape number. this but that's a crazy number that's a, like the <laughs> fucking insane. Houston Rockets should be 7 for 26 on the road yeah. not the warriors so um anyway i just the pool contract makes me nervous and, yeah, and we're uh, at the point in the draft where it's like, I'm just looking at that kind of money. It hasn't even kicked in yet. And I'm not sure. I just feel like I can get better options for that, for that spot. So Waz, you seem like you want to defend it. I, I it, it, The reason why I defend it is because I think this is kind of just the going rate for these dudes. And by these dudes, I mean, these shooting guards who score and do absolutely nothing else. Right. And it's not, it's Jordan Poole, it's Anthony Simons, it's CJ McCollum. Uh, These guys who were just, they're just one dimensional players, Uh, but they seem to all get paid. Right. Here's here's another one. Tyler hero. Exactly. Um, who, you know, by the way, I think he's a little better than Poole. A little bit better defensively. I think he's a, 
But that's the thing. Hero and Pool were side by side heading into yeah. the season. Hero ascended. I think Pool went backwards a little bit. Yeah, and but I feel like it just felt backwards because the stakes seem so high in Golden State, right? And so when Poole's not delivering, it's like, whoa, this is supposed to be the championship favorite. And this guy's supposed to be a huge part of what they're doing. And he's not delivering on that. And so part of me, I'm like, yeah, he's probably overpaid. But also, I think this is just how these guys get valued. Once you have, once it's identifiable where it's like you can shoot and you can create your own shot pretty consistently and efficiently, their teams are going to pay you for that. And so, you know, he's in line with his peers, but damn, it's a lot of bread. And 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 the the, the side cost of it was sort of disrupting the tranquility with Draymond Green who's just in a vacuum is a better player than Jordan Poole is. And then when you consider what he means to this team specifically, like he's just better. And then he has to watch Jordan Poole get paid, so it has like yeah, these compounding factors. It's like, damn, House, you want to guess his three point percentage this year heading into tonight's Clippers game? I know it's among the worst in the, in the NBA. It's a little uh, better, thirty two point nine. Oh, okay. But he takes eight a game. I'm just gonna go chalk on this one. Mm. Just need an easy one after you know it was <laughs> that Jordan Poole conversation. I think it took a lot out of us. We disagreed on some stuff. Um, this one, there's no disagreement whatsoever. He's French. He plays for the Knicks. <laughs> He's on. <obviously, yeah. laughs> it's it's a mere pittance. It's two for thirty six point nine, and then he has a player option or the team option team next option. year. So it's really mm-hmm. only this year, next year. The contract is so bad. <laughs> And it's so weird that he's just not even a rotation guy anymore. And then you see him on the bench and he's always kind of standing there. He's not really applauding. He's just kind of watching the game like the rest of us. And his name is Evan Fournier and I'm making him my pick. Uh, Waz, any thoughts? Yeah, 100%. uh, This this was on my board. I had this sort of highlighted because it's like one... He's going to make $20 million next year. And this is a guy who would struggle to earn a contract of 4 or $5 million in Europe, right? And you're paying him to do nothing on the Knicks, and it's, but it's with good reason. He's just, he's just not an effective offensive player. He's never been anybody's idea of a defender um, at a position where you need people who can hold up to the most skilled guys in the league. And so, yeah, this is a terrible deal. And... and Tibbs was really stubborn about playing. I'm playing veterans. Last year, he was so damn stubborn about this shit. Um, Where this year, he's finally found religion. And it's just quickly and Grimes and, you know, all of the young guys now. And and Fournier is, yeah, he's master splinter now. Well, we always talk about the 50, 40, 90 guys house. Fournier is working on a 35, 32, 86. <laughs> it's unconventional. True shooting is 490 this year. He played 44 minutes in February. He's played zero this month. It just Sheesh. sucks to have the bad contract where it's like Duncan Robinson. There might be one more run with him. Yeah. You never know. It's like, oh man. Oh, he hit some threes. The Fournier thing is like sunk cost. He doesn't want to be there. They wish he wasn't there. Clearly this summer, heading into the last year of his contract, he'll be a trade piece. And did I leave anything else out, House? No, I, I mean, I'm looking, uh, first of all, Fournier and Bertans, that, both those guys could go to Europe. That would make, I want to make an all-Europe team. They that, go together. That makes sense to me. But it, <laughs> look, you mentioned Duncan Robinson. The, 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 the contracts kind of line up. Fournier for Robinson, does that do anything for you? Well, yeah, they line up from a year by year standpoint, but the Robinson goes way longer is the issue. All yeah, right, House, yes, you're on the clock. Yes, yes. Um, we we mentioned this guy's name, and this is purely a function of the amount of money that he makes relative to how important he is to this team's success, and it is Tobias Harris. Yeah. Uh, I think it's time time to go ahead and, and call it out. He's got two years at seventy seven. <laughs> million dollars. It's a little steep. That is uh, the, 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 you know, he's perfectly fine, right? He's shooting around 50%. He, he's averaging. I have the, you know, the numbers up here. Oh, Definitely he's a playoff rotation guy. Points. He's a yeah, mid-level pro- exception level player. Right. Yeah, he's like a, like a, that Jay, like slightly better than like that Jay Crowder level of the 10 million a year. Maybe and the, he's and like the, a 14 million a year guy. And, and, and he is, you know, 
inconsistent in a way that would be fine if you were paying him at that kind of level. But his inconsistency, and you just like look at his last five games, he plays 25 minutes on Sunday against the Wizards, shoots 30 Six percent. Uh, oh wow, he's he's a, his shooting percentage has been bad lately. But you know, four games ago a fifty percent game, and and five games ago a sixty six percent game. You know, fourteen rebounds three nights ago. Uh, you know, three rebounds. Uh, uh, you know, against the Wizards. So it's it's that inconsistency. It's that up and down where Philly is legit. That, that's a serious team. Mm -hmm. They are formidable. I am excited to see the, the, them where they land playoff wise. I think they're going to get the two seed. And 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 uh, beat out the Charmin Celtics. I'm sorry, Podfather. Um, <laughs> it would be great if they could get some consistent play out of Tobias. That's all. Yeah, Tobias gonna... Harris, fif fifteen and six this year was. Yeah, that's yeah. They, they, when they the, the my problem with his contract because he's up there for me too is that when they inevitably lose at some point in the second or if they're lucky the conference championship of this year's playoffs. Nobody will say his name. Nobody will mention what his lack of contribution was or whatever he put. Like, he has just skated this entire deal. <laughs> like, nobody cares about what he um, brings to the table. And he signed a maximum contract extension with this mm. team. It's kind of crazy. I hate going against a fellow New York City guy. But God damn, man, this is this is a tough deal. <laughs> yeah. Again, playoff player, no question. Just a little too expensive. Was you got two in a row? Who do you got? There's a couple guys that I cannot believe have been taken yet. I think because oh yeah, you, I got none of I us gotta, have the balls to take I have one a, in particular. I have a few. Um, the first one that comes to mind, and uh, to me, it's DeAndre Hunter. Um, and part of this is because DeAndre Hunter, we DeAndre have three Hunter. Hawks already. <laughs> DeAndre I didn't even Hunter. Have that DeAndre Hunter, after this season, he's got four years. His extension kicks in four years, $90 million, Ooh. right? Four years, $90 million. And more importantly, Bill, a guy who's making $12, 13000000 million was on this team is way better than him and is killing in Sacramento right now. And that's uh, my guy, Red Velvet, Kevin Herter. So yeah. that's why this, this particular contract just gnaws at me because... They had the guy at this position who was just, just flat out a better player. Well, but Waz, this is what happens when Roman Roy gets to run your team. Mmm. Mmm. Is is that what's happening with Hawks ownership right now? Hawks <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so this this deal As is the a last bad chefs one. in that in front of that oven. This deal is a bad one. Um, Bill is daring us to get spicy. Wait, wait. I have I have a quick DeAndre Hunter thing. Sure, go ahead. I'm disappointed. Not in yeah. you, but in, in him that he made this list. I really like DeAndre Hunter. I liked his game. I thought he was going to take a big step up this year. He's the classic. A lot of smoke getting blown up his butt about what's going to happen this year, House. Oh, DeAndre Hunter, watch out for him. Breakout year. And it... it and, I don't know. It'd be easy to just say, well, this is a weird team. I wouldn't want to be a small forward on this weird team, but I don't know. I'm disappointed house. Well, he, he is a defensive minded guy and, and we've sort of touted him. Um, and, and he hasn't missed, you know, previously he had a little bit of, of the injury bug, but he's played 59 games, um, this season, but it, it's turned out to, to be quiet. And I think some of that has to do with the dysfunction in Atlanta. Who's in charge? I mean, I really can't believe we have three Hawks already. We're only, you know, 12 picks in. Unbelievable. Um, but I, I agree with, with the assessment. The, the problem with DeAndre Hunter is that he cost them uh, red velvet. Well, and, and $90 million for the next four years. Who do you have for the other one, House? I uh, was. You're gonna do it. Somebody's gonna do it soon. Yeah, I know, it's, yeah. I, and I know I that bomb's spicy. gonna be dropped. I'm waiting for I, I, it. I gotta get spicy. For me, it's Michael Porter Jr. Um, oh, again, he got dropped another, last year too. Another yeah. ma he's a max level guy, and some people would say, "Oh, he's not really allowed to play to that level." I just don't. I just don't see it. I don't. I don't see it. And they're gonna rely on this guy to be one of their best wing defenders in the playoffs. And if they can't do anything defensively on the wing, it's because Michael Porter Jr. wasn't doing his job as the second highest paid guy on the team. Um, and so, you know, offensively, 
I believe in the style that they play. I think it's completely unguardable. I don't think Michael Porter Jr. needs to be some one-on-one assassin on this team. So it's not really about what he's doing offensively. It's just like he should be a better rebounder. He should be playing better defense. Just from his size alone, he should be better at those things. And he's just not. And oftentimes... It feels like he's just going through the motions out there. And, you know, part of this is my sensitivity to the fact that I picked the Nuggets to win the championship this year. And I, and I need Michael Porter to, to come through I know, for he's me. he's their so swing guy. Well, you didn't, me, tell the, you didn't say the contract. Oh, so after this year, there's three years, $105 million left on the deal. So that's- like, I have that's it on a, spot track. It's, I have, this is year one. It's five years for 179, but the fifth year has partial guarantees in it. Right. Net next three years guaranteed 33, 36, 38.3. Um, listen, here's the problem with Michael Porter Jr. Cause I do think he's in, you watch on the certain nights and he'll make a big shot and it's exciting. And he does some really fun stuff with Jokic every once in a while. I shouldn't be pleasantly surprised every time he has a good quarter. It feels That's Toby Harris. Like, oh, cool! Michael Porter. Michael Porter played well for an hour. Yeah, like I shouldn't it, be psyched about it. A lot of Tobias Harris vibes with that one. Um, if, as far as impact on a night to night basis, but yeah, how's any me, Porter takes? Any what? Do you have any Michael Porter Jr. takes, or do you want to just do your pick? Well, I really do think that what Waz is saying is is the case. Their their playoff fortunes really reside on that dude's shoulders, and we haven't seen enough to like really feel confident as these playoffs are on a four game losing streak. And he he is the swing. He's the fulcrum player. I I, I believe. I mean, Nurkic is going to get his. MPJ has got to play crazy defense. He's got to average double digit rebounds, and he's got to knock down those those threes. For Denver to go on the run um, that we kind of imagined they had, cap- they were capable of. Counter just from somebody who watches a lot of Nuggets games. Porter seventeen and five, forty one point five percent from three this year. I'm more worried about Murray watching the Nuggets the last two mm. weeks than I am about okay. Porter because I don't know what happened with uh, with Murray. But I, we all agree that Michael Porter makes too much money. How soon do you have next? <laughs> Um, this feels like low hanging fruit. Um, maybe, a, maybe even a, a cop out. Um, Kyle Lowry's still going to yeah. make sixty million yeah. bucks. You know, he has sixty yep. million dollars. Yeah, it, yeah, yep. it, it, in the face. Uh, it's a tough deal. Can't get on the floor. <laughs> can't can't help Miami get over the hump. Um, I I don't like to do what I'm about to do. Uh, but dude never looks in shape. He, and, and <laughs> you know. It, it, I understand the injury component of it and, and rehab and everything like that, but you can be in shape and be injured at the same time. That that is, they're not mutually ex- exclusive. Um, he looks like he's rolling in at at the Y, and you know if he rolled on the floor at, at the Y, you're like, okay, he's the guy you would underestimate who would come in and start making thirty footers in your grill. I've made that mistake before, um, but he's not he's not rolling in the Y. Miami needs him to make a viable playoff push and he can't get on the floor and make that contribution. It, it, they really miss him. He could, he would really, the version of Kyle Lowry from two years ago would be incredible for this Miami team, but he can't play. So I have nothing to add. I, I think it's a little too <laughs> high for him. There's a couple really tasty choices left on the board. There's a few tasty ones. I'm going to go next. Out this pick. is an easy one. I, Honestly, great value. Can't believe he hasn't gone yet. Um, three years, thirty-six million. Doesn't play anymore, even though he's on one of the most fun teams in the league. Rashawn Holmes um, mm. doesn't play. They don't have a backup center. He's right there. They just paid him an extension. Guess what? No thanks, Rashawn. You just you stay over there. We're gonna have fun and score one hundred and twenty-nine points a game. Yeah. Um, just cheer us on. And it's, it's this it's is tough. one where they will be moving this one and shopping. I know they were shopping at the deadline too, but they will be shopping this one hard. Yeah, he's a he's an offense only player on a team that does, already has plenty of it. And it's like, dude, we, we need some level of defense at some point here. And Rashawn Holmes has kind of never been that dude. Um, although I've, I've liked him in the past, there was times where he was one of the only bright spots. I like him too. Watching the Kings, but yeah, he's he's a bit slightly overpaid for what they're asking him to do at this point. Honestly, uh-huh. House, I think he would have been a good tanking weapon for one of the, like the Rockets should have like <laughs> pursued him to add him to the list. He would have been good. 
My only quibble with with drafting him here is in some respects, it seems like it's addition by subtraction for the Kings. Like not playing them, him has given them the rotation that they, that that works for them. Like he's not stealing minutes from from anybody, and it's only twelve million bucks. Which to me, like in the in the big scheme of things, you you almost can you you can whiff on, on a all twelve right, million fair. dollar player. That's all. Well, since House just challenged my manhood, oh boy, I'm gonna drop the bomb that <laughs> the two of you. Wusses were just afraid to do it. We all stared at it for a couple rounds now. None of us had the balls. Guess what? I just put my balls on the table. Zion Williamson, six years, 207 million. (laughs) (laughs) He is an Uh, unbelievable basketball player. $207 million and he cannot play for four weeks in a row. And I think we have three drafted five, ten. We almost had twenty players. I, I I would be very scared to cut that check if I was a New Orleans owner. Even though I get all the upside, and he's an amazing basketball player. Can he stay in the courthouse? Can we see him stay in the court? See, he's in the same category for me as Lonzo. It's a sad contract, not a bad contract, because the potential that he showed us in the you know. Two 30 game stints that we got out of him had him appearing as as a transcendent player, right? I mean, we we he he had numbers that were top five all time NBA history kind of of, of offensive efficiency, uh, points in the paint kind kind of uh, trajectory. He just he just can't play. So it it is he's still super young. I give him enormous credit for. Listening over the summer, he got in great shape. Really, he fun showed to watch. up in shape. He was ready to kick ass. New Orleans, what were they? Twenty three and twelve. Uh, at, you know, at one point they were third in the West. At one point, I I am going to lose a ton of money on the Pelicans this season because I was so bullish on their prospects. I thought yeah, you have sure. multiple. You might even have a Zion MVP bet somewhere. No, somewhere I didn't do that MVP one. bet collection. I didn't do. I did bet a lot of guys for MVP. <laughs> Zion wasn't one of them. But it's a bummer. What I say about Zion, it's a, it's a bummer. He's young. Maybe there's still some hope. Yeah, the, the stuff about him not staying on the floor is tough. But I think the difference between him and Al- him and Lonzo Ball is fair or not the perception that throughout his career, Zion hasn't been exactly um, dedicated to his fitness. Uh, and it's hard to separate that lack of dedication from his injuries, I, I feel like the two go hand in hand. And maybe I might be wrong. Like, you know, spoiler alert, I'm no doctor. But I, I think there's a perception that a lot of his injury problems stem from his lack of, you know, nutritional stuff, the the, the working out stuff. And when we say he was in shape coming into this season, I would say he's in shape compared to the <laughs> seasons before that. <laughs> he's when in shape he came for him. In. Fair. Not in shape, actually, right? <laughs> and so that's my thing about Zion is like, man, is he is his is he even gonna make it to the end of that deal? Um, his body anyway. That's why I question that. That's why I think uh Bill uh makes a, a solid point. This is an inspired pick for sure. But I was thinking I, about somebody else, honestly. I was I think the sad that. the sad contract, bad contract is first of all a really good gimmick. Congratulations <laughs> yes. to me for thinking of it. I was very <laughs> excited. I still got it. I still, still throw a fastball every once in a while. Um the Zion thing makes me sad more than mad at the at the figure. Yeah. Certainly wouldn't blame them for what they paid him. It's Zion Williamson, but um, I just look at it like LeBron got plantar fasciitis, which everyone else in the league gets and your season's over. And <laughs> LeBron is back. Instagramming like- photos from a hyperbaric <laughs> chamber. <laughs> and it's just, he's clearly going to be back in like two weeks and he'll be fine. And if Zion got that injury, we wouldn't see him for like a year and a half. All right, House, you're up. Uh, I thought you had somebody else in mind for this. And so I'm going to, I'm going to jump in the pool with, with both feet. And I don't know if, if you guys are, are going to uh, agree or, or what, but for how old this dude is and, and what, you know, the, the, the age through which this extension that he just oh, signed wow. is, is going to run. Oh my he, God. He, he's don't a, disrespect my guy. Oh, he's a one goodness. of one. He's a one of one. He is the face of the franchise. He deserves every accolade. But in terms of return, in terms of the the fortunes of the franchise, 
the goals to be the goal to be successful. This contract feels like it, it's a limiting factor. I am going to say Dame Lillard. I, mm. I love I, mm. I love oh. Dame Dollar. I love him so much. He was a, a an absolute ray of light for Portland through the the entire uh, uh, winter from January on up through a top three scorer in the league. But this contract has him. Hold that! My be, red leg just caught on firehouse. Hold <laughs> that! Hold that. Just stamping it out. I just want you to hear this. Well, let me let me ask: How much money do you think he's going to make in twenty in the twenty twenty six twenty twenty seven season? <laughs> it's a, it's like it starts with a this six, like right? It starts with a six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it starts with a six. Now I know that we there's a new collective uh, bargaining agreement coming. There's a new media deal coming, and at some point, sixty million dollars is it could feel like just a regular old upper tier contract. But Dame's going to be 36 turning 37. There's not a huge track record of smallish shooting guards who are still at the peak efficiency at that point in their career. Love Dame Dollar. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. It's just well, too rich. It's a, it's so a lifetime extension, achievement award contract. That's all. His extension was two years, 121.7 million. Was <laughs> if Dame did a diss track of house. Would that be the highlight of your career, my career, or house's <laughs> career or all three of us at the same time? Uh, I, I would say all three of us at the same time. And, and the reason why I disagree with house one, I think Dame Lillard's contract is one that a bunch of people would want to jump on. Um, yeah. with two feet. Cause it's not just his play, which the guy dropped 70 something points this Love year, it. right? So the good. two previous years, this is why, this is why I disagree with this. And it has to do with the, the Trey Young stuff, the two previous years where Dame is playing through injury. He's not doing load management. He's not doing the this. The, he, they had to make him sit games and go get operated on to fix himself. This guy just like refuses to not play. The, and then, of course, there's his production, which, look, man, Steph is, is probably better. But like, man, I think Dame is like a, a half a notch right underneath that. And just as a as a professional as somebody who's going to lead your franchise and do the right thing, set the right examples, like that kind of stuff gets discounted too much, I think. And so I disagree with you. I understand the take. Uh, $63 million. I appreciate the and take. And the 26-27 season is going to be a lot. But I think for the next three seasons, Dame's going to be a $50 million player for sure. I think it's basically the contract itself, even if you just whited out his name and just said, here's his contract. Jarring. Yeah. It's almost like blind has to be in the top 25. 121 million starting <laughs> three years from now, like makes my sphincter just tighten. <laughs> like all kinds of terrible things can happen to basketball players or, you know, it's just, yeah. man, that's a lot of money. But uh, House, really appreciate and respect where you went. You have one more pick somehow. What do you got? No. I, oh, no, I, you don't. I, Waz has two. It's Waz with two. Okay, so my first one, uh, I can't believe you guys have left oh, wait, this do on I the have board. To, oh, no. Did I miss a pick? I took Zion, and then I took, oh, and Holmes. Okay, my bad. Go ahead, Wes. All right, so my pick here is Zach Levine. Um, and that's because the Bulls were hemming and hawing and crying about having to give this guy a deal. Before this, um, they were just killing this dude in the press. You guys will remember... Our friend Brian Windhorse was at the Olympics. He asked Zach Levine about getting a deal done. And Zach Levine said, I just want my respect, <laughs> a.k.a. pay me the goddamn maximum in money and years. Like, they fought over this over the press. They gave him the deal. Five, and I for, think five for 215. Basically. And I think they're going to try. There's four years and $178 million left after this I have worse news year. for you, Waz. 15% trade kicker. Woo! So now <laughs> if they trade him, that's up to like 245. I, I think they'll be looking to move him this summer. But I, I I wonder how many teams outside of like teams like L.A., like I think the Lakers would be willing to do anything for some win now stuff, even if with yeah. the long term ramifications. But like I wonder who would actually take on Zach Levine at that number, knowing he just he doesn't really change your life. You know, you have to have excellence already in place for him to make a big deal. I think, don't get it twisted. Zach Levine, LeBron, AD, I think that would be incredible. 
right? But like on a on a different kind of team, or the Bulls more specifically, they're nothing with him, and he's got these lingering knee issues. So yeah, I think the Levine deal might be one in a few years where we'd be like, "Holy moly, this is this is a tough one." I agree that he's a trade candidate this summer. I don't agree that the Lakers will trade for that contract because they already have. Anthony Davis and, and LeBron James in year 21 on their team at that point. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you'd want a little stability with your $40 million <laughs> guy at that point. I can see the Nets for him. The Nets have all those different pieces and like a three for one, something like that. But uh, I could also see House's Wizards. It seems like the kind of contract the Wizards would be. They're just kind of on brand for them. <laughs> Well, if, if you're looking for a guy who's going to help a franchise, you know, spin its wheels and win about 38 games a season, that ZL's the dude. I will say this in, in the in the Bulls' defense, the context in which they made that deal, it's understandable. You were, you yeah, were thinking it's like about a no Lonzo choice, coming back. Yeah. yeah, and they they didn't have a choice. So because you know you, that, it was a 35 game sample with with Lonzo, and and it's like, man, th this is really could be something. And and we've been cheated of it because of the bad injury luck. Waz, you got one more pick. What do you got? Mm, I'm trying to see where I... Okay, I know what I want to do. Um, it's Jonathan Isaac. Uh, and this might be bad contract, sad contract, because he can't stay on the floor. But, you know, when you got a guy in your locker room quoting Bible verses to NBA players, I, I got to put you on bad contract alert. Um, and so, uh, Jonathan Isaac, a.k.a. the preacher man... Two years, thirty-four million dollars still left. They have some outs with it, though. I think. I think. I think they can get it. There's some partial guarantee stuff with it that I think they can get out of next year. Um, no. Should we get no? No. no. It's okay. Two guaranteed. Two guaranteed years mm. after this year at seventeen point four. Yeah. Uh, for a guy who never plays belongs. and whose teammates roll their eyes every time he steps into a the same room as them. So uh yeah, put 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 Jonathan Isaac on that list for me. House, what do you got? Maybe we'll do one more one more round here. What do you got, House? Oh good. It's time. I'm ready. I have <laughs> my guy. Oh no. He's a very important part of, of the Charmin Celtics. And he and, and, <laughs> and if he, if he was playing it might be a different. He could be the coach on the floor that that the team needs, and he and he should be the 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 enforcer uh, in terms of, of of force of will. He's got uh, it's a, he signed a four year, seventy six and a half million dollar contract, and at the end of this contract, he's going to get paid twenty one million bucks in twenty twenty five twenty twenty six. I mean, if if Marcus Smart could stay on the floor. <laughs> and, you know, help that team find itself all over again in terms of some defensive intensity. I might feel like you're getting your, your, your money's worth. But who who is Marcus Smart at this point in his career, Podfather? I ask you. I mean, the sad thing about what you laid out is whatever physical condition he's in right now, they're actually better off if he's if he's not playing. Cause he's been that bad and they have Derek white just sitting right there, ready to play any crunch time. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. What smarts just look terrible. And it, mm. and it's not like always having a bad game. And this is like every game. He looks bad. The Hawks game. They're just, they're just trying to finish the Hawks game. And he's just coming up with new ways for the Hawks to get the ball back rockets game. He was singularly atrocious and white was sitting there on crunch time. It's been really bad. I, I do worry. You know, he was awesome last year. He was awesome to start the season. But I do like thinking in football terms, these guys like, you know, like running backs or tight ends or strong safeties that just are in a lot of collisions and a lot of physicality. And all of a sudden it goes off a cliff. And I really hope that's not happening with him right now. Um, it's, it's the topic of every conversation I have with every Celtics fan in my life is where I'm like, what is going on with Marcus Smart? What do you see, Wes? Yeah, I, I he's but he's he goes through these stretches where he can't make a shot and he looks like a complete disaster. Um, but he could always and, guard somebody in those stretches. Right. The, the and that, thing and that's, that's the problem. He can't stay in front of people anymore, and that that's more alarming to me than the the shot coming and going. Yeah, that, and 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 that's the the real problem is like now he's not this elite 
<laughs> didn't he win defensive player of the year last year? Was that he just deserved last it. year? You know, um, now he's just getting abused. You know, I would hope maybe this is just an effort, regular season thing. And then in the playoffs, well, he might be hiding back an injury. To, that, that, there's maybe. an injury, like I'm just not telling people I'm injured piece of this that's possible. If that's the case, he should stop playing right now. Take the 10 to 12 games yeah. that you need to get right and get right. Like that, you know, yeah. help this team. You, you the, the Celtics um, have showed an, an alarming res- lack of resilience in the face of, of physical play. What the Knicks did to them, uh, you know, a, a couple weeks ago, in terms of that overtime, they bullied the Celtics. They bu- The Celtics could not corral a single rebound. The only way they got the ball back in overtime was by fouling Mitchell Robinson, who got every yeah. goddamn rebound. Yeah, the Josh Hart just seemed tougher than anyone in the Celtics was problem. They there's not a lot of dog in the Celtics team this year. And you think like last year where Grant Williams and Smart and Robert Williams were these huge pieces of everything that was happening. This year Grant Williams is getting yanked around and he's been bad for six weeks. Smart, I don't know what's going on. Rob Williams doesn't play. It's it's pretty rough. All right, I'm going to end this for us. Um, I don't think I'm going to drop a bomb. There's some, there's some pretty fun ones on the board still. All right. Nah, I don't, I don't want to feud with the Rockets fans again. I'm going to stay away <laughs> from that. It's so whiny. It's so whiny fan base. Um, I... <laughs> Think about it. I want the Portland fans to know that I love Dame. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't misunderstand. <laughs> I love, I we're all them. afraid of the aggregated blog just content. Just $63 coming out of this million podcast. Dollars in 2026. Says that's Dame all. Lillard overpaid. <laughs> I love him. I oh. love him. Don't get it wrong. Oh my God. I had somebody on my list that was supposed to go in my like top seven and he just went undrafted. I'm going to fire like two of my scouts. Yusuf Nurchich, four years, yeah. 70 million. <laughs> He's up How there. did he not go four rounds ago? He's up there. He can't guard He's anybody. He cannot guard there. anybody. It's terrible. He's supposed to be the anchor of what they're doing down there. And, they, you know, again, they're, they're right there with Dallas. Just some of the worst defense that can put. It's a layup line. Against these line. guys every single night. And yeah, Nurk is, he's up there. Uh, another big man I can't understand. Marvin Bagley, two more years left. 25 yeah, he's got, mil. Yeah, like, that's oh, right. How? Why is that happening? And then Norm Powell. He's got three Ooh. years, 60 mil left on his deal. Ooh, I kind of like <laughs> Norm, on. though. Norm does I come, like in, Norm, come in hot is, every once in a while. Yeah, you're right. He's a $20 million dollar player. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Can Love I read you? Norm? you just all the centers in the league and you tell me you just stop me when it's somebody you'd rather have than you'd rather have Nurkic than the center than that person Jokic Embiid Sabonis Adebayo Anthony Davis Brooke Lopez Jaron Jackson Carl Anthony Towns Vucevic Kessler Aiton Porzingis Jared Allen Miles Turner Pirtle Capella Horford Gobert Robert Williams Nick Claxton Jonas Valanciunas <laughs> Mark Maybe? Williams on the no, on I Charlotte. Like more. No, Mark Williams is a is a is a Mark rookie. Williams. He's, he's, better than a he's gonna be he's good. Than, he's definitely not better than Kevon Looney. No shot. Steven Adams. Mm. No, Steven Adams is the secret to to nah, Memphis' I don't fortune. Think he's him, better than Mason Adams. Plumley. All right, now, oh, now we're we getting might be warm. There. Now <laughs> we're getting yeah yeah, there. yeah yeah yeah. All right, yeah, so yeah. we're so we're now in the Mason Plumley like <laughs> Christian Wood. I think Christian Wood is misunderstood. <laughs> That's tough I, for I, Nurkic. I didn't think that Christian Wood and, and Jason Kidd were going to be a good match. And, and, and guess what? They're not a good At match. At least Nurkic rebounds, man. But Christian Wood is just a way better offensive player. He's shooting the hell out of the rock. Like, I don't know. But yeah, that's the range. The well, plum leads, apologies the woods. To, um, apologies to Devontae Graham, who has three for 36 left. <sighs> and Rudy that's Gay, ugly. two for 12.6. And Daniel I, Tice. I respect Rudy. Daniel Tice can't believe he didn't get drafted. He was, <laughs> where is he? It's 18 million bucks. Who cares? Eight, two, two years, for 18. nine million bucks a year. Who cares? Gordon Hayward, two for 62. He doesn't know what, what he did wrong not to get drafted. Look, um, I, that I was pretty good, good lately, about though. Gordon Hayward. I've been watching him lately, and he looks so damn good. He looks good. Somebody's going to be plays, trading for him this summer. He looks good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin Porter, four for 50. He can't believe he wasn't drafted. <laughs> And JaVale McGee, three for 17. He's a little stunned. 
PJ Tucker, three for 33 the last year, he's going to be like, he's going to earn all old. of that money in the playoffs. You watch, Bill. right? Yeah. It's, a, it's basically a three year deal just for this year. And then last but not least, Johnny Davis, two years, 9.9 million. That's not nice. <laughs> why, why do we have to end on that note? You know, that's just a blown pick. It's not surprising. It's Washington doing the drafting. Why do we have to end on that? 